what's up with this 5-3 European standard aspect ratio? This is America, damn it! You either chop that sh** to 4-3 or expand it to 1-8-5-1. None of this European middle-of-the-road art house, but rear window was shot this way business. See, this is what happens when you don't have enough logos to make me angry. I have to find other outlets. The great merchant ships with their cargoes of Arcturian solar crystals felt safe and secure. God damn, this is beautiful animation. I'd be tempted to take a cent off if Disney had committed to a mix of 3D CG and its tried and true traditional 2D animation. But they didn't. They abandoned it because of a couple box office bombs that had nothing to do with the art and went into full 3D CG jelly bean heads, which we're now stuck with for life. So here's a sin for that unnecessary course correction from the House of Mouse. Little did they suspect that they were pursued by pirates and they had terrible lookouts because it's super hard to hide in space. And the most feared of all these pirates was the notorious Captain Nathaniel Flint. Badass. I can't wait to spend an entire movie building him up and establishing him as the villain General Scales wishes he could have been. They couldn't possibly waste a super cool bad guy like this. Oh, can those eyes get any bigger? The philosophical foundation for most manga animation somehow makes it into the script. Treasure planet. Roll planets. I'm gonna get... Oh. <laughs> Holy sh**. She just absolutely engulfed half that child belly. If you frame by frame that sh**, this is the most horrifying thing to ever be in a Disney movie. Look at that face. She wants to eat that child. Jaw is unhinging like a snake ready to swallow a baby cow. That child is trying to escape the jaw of a big mouth demon monster and you will not convince me otherwise. I know what's real. You win. Lying to your children. Well, in this case, accidentally telling the truth to your children, but you get the idea. <laughs> oh, our hero has a death wish. Got it. Great lesson for all the kiddos out there. Head straight to danger, kids. That's where the fun is. <laughs> you see, Jim, whether you're actively trespassing within sight of police officers or in the middle of sweet, sweet passion with your college girlfriend, you never under any circumstance, wahoo! You'll just end up disappointed while wearing a pair of handcuffs. Awesome! Enjoy! <coughs> Trying to clean these braces later. But I really think that he's starting to turn a corner. Mrs. Hawkins. Jim! That's one of the more nifty features of these robot cops. They've got programming that allows them to detect the most ironic moment before entering dramatically through a door. Moving violation 904, section 15, paragraph... Um... Six. Programming a robot to be forgetful. Any more slip-ups will result in a one-way ticket to juvenile hall. A one-way ticket, eh? Guess we're just disposing of any remaining shred of hope that incarceration is for rehabilitation? Going for the honesty, I guess. And by point, I mean sit. This woman has switched seats for this group shop. This table has appeared out of nowhere between this family and the stairs. This child's Aurelian jelly worm bowl is refilled. And most importantly, no one has touched these delicious powdered spheroids since they were delivered over two minutes ago. I'm at the end of my rope. Ever since his father left, well, Jim's just never recovered. Eve's drops position. You slid off the roof and were right there at the ship on a dock by the house. Why are you so far away now? The cyborg. Beware the cyborg. Thing Joss Whedon said after filming Justice League somehow makes it into the script. Wait a second, I've seen that golden ore before. Is this a prequel to that Star Wars show, Ahsoka? Damn you, Dave Filoni. It wasn't enough that I had to watch Clone Wars and Rebels. You wanted me to watch this too? Off with your homework. Certainly a lot of trouble over that odd little sphere. The planet Earth. That's the Magellanic Cloud. Woo! The Coral Galaxy. I guess it's pretty convenient that the guy who just happened to come along with you also just happened to be an expert on astronomy after you just happened to know how to open the secret map. Storing your toothbrush atop a giant pile of books. There's not even a sink up there. Go, Delbert. Go, Delbert. Stop, Delbert. Stop, Delbert. I really, 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 really want to go. Then go, dude. You're an adult. Leave Jim and Sarah your house key, take the map, and scram. You don't need Jim in any capacity. He provides nothing to this expedition. Movie tries to trick me into sinning that we can see stars behind the shadowed part of the moon, but that's no moon. It's a space station. So instead, I'm sinning that that line now makes me think of Moonfall more than Star Wars. F***ing Moonfall. I should never have listened to that pushy, two-headed saleswoman. That's dual cranialist. <laughs> I'm fluent in flatula, Jim. Sure, but that doesn't explain how you made a fart squeak. That requires skin-to-skin -skin contact through a very thick glove and who knows how many layers of gigantic space soup material. Also, stealing a joke from the Rock Bottom episode of SpongeBob, which came out two years prior to this film. Ship shape it is, sir. 
but I'm not the captain. Oh my god, can you believe the authority figure is a woman? I feel so silly with my outdated views on gender and leadership. Cliche. If you don't mind, I can manage my own plugging. Of all the movies intent on setting me up for obvious college girlfriend jokes, I didn't have Treasure Planet leading the list. To mule and blabber about a treasure map in front of this particular crew demonstrates a level of ineptitude that borders on the imbecilic. The birth of a generation of furries would be excellent at cinema sins. I said something rather good this morning before coffee. <laughs> That may be the most sinful thing in the whole movie. <laughs> Saying something good before you've had your coffee. Well, that's just silly. Long John will now show off his variety of cooking contraptions. And while I appreciate the imagination, for the love of nanobots, I'm just not buying that there is enough room in this hollow looking arm for all those attachments and the two sets of mechanical hands he approached Jim with earlier. Mmm, delightfully tangy, yet robust. Old family recipe. Ah! Dramatically timed buoyancy. I took a shine to me. We've been together ever since. Is this relationship platonic? Look, I'm not judging, but this cuddle goes on for all of the I'm uncomfortable thinking of the possibilities sometime. Also, I once met someone who had a morph tattoo, and when I asked, is that morph? They immediately hugged me. They then told me that they said they would hug anyone who correctly identified that tattoo. And that is the hardest I've ever seen anyone work for an excuse to hug random strangers without consent. We best be keeping a sharp eye on this one. Anymore? Disney can't do without their cute little sidekicks, can they? Not just for a bit of, ah, oh, shucks adorableness, but so that their characters have someone to exposition to without having to just talk to themselves. Mr. Snuff, engage artificial gravity! Which is something we can do on this unenclosed vessel that is barely even off the ground of a space station that should clearly still be providing the same gravity it already was. Also, even if this were possible, why would you wait until people started floating away to engage it? Even a couple decades ago, sci-fi wanted space whales. Why? Probably because they thought space giraffes would look ridiculous. Upon my word, an Orcus Galacticus. An Orcus Galacticus? As in one? There are hundreds of them all around you. And you just left the space station, so I guarantee these pods can be seen with a telescope. Your false shock isn't fooling me, doctor. You can keep that kind of flim flammery for your spaceport floozies, Silver. <laughs> well done, Morph. You were already making me like you more than your shape-shifting counterpart in the 90s X-Men series. I'd take a cent off, but you've just reminded me of more from the 90s X-Men series. Say hello to Mr. Mop and Mrs. Buckets. Throwing your mop and bucket at someone without any warning, when them missing it will result in you losing your mop and bucket forever. Also, anthropomorphizing and gendering Mr. Mop and Mrs. Bucket so that every time he dips Mr. Mop into Mrs. Bucket, he has to wonder if he's enabling an affair. He'll be looking over his shoulder for a very angry Mrs. Mop and Mr. Bucket for the rest of his life. What are you looking at, weirdo? Yeah. Weirdo. Now, what's weird is you crossing your arms over your eyes to begin with, just to give the illusion you are one creature. Cabin boys should learn to mind their own business. Obvious henchmen should learn not to discuss pirate business out in the open where anyone could hear. Morph, keep an eye on this pup. Let me know if there be any more distractions. Confusing almost getting killed with a mere distraction. Okay, I'm gonna need a little more explanation on Morph. Specifically, why do they always have disconnected parts of themselves hanging around? If I were a being that could morph into anything I wanted, I'd be very careful to keep everything connected to my body at all times. Why risk losing any body parts? This has been a fun day. You took a whole day to mop a single ship deck? That should have been done in two hours tops, so that's on you, man. Your father not the teaching sort. No. He was more the taking off and never coming back sort. Damn it, Disney! Just let a kid have both parents around for once. I'm not asking for stereotypical two-parent families every time, but would it kill you to try one once? Hell, give the kid three or four parents for all I care. Just quit using a missing parent as some sort of pathos crutch. Why are there barnacles on a ship that has never docked in water? Why? The movie is now in the midst of a boat work slash father figure montage set to a John Resnick song that is so goo goo dolls and so era specific that future archaeologists who dig up this movie will use this scene to accurately date it within two weeks of its release. Is this montage still montaging? It's been over two minutes already. We get it. We got it when you did the whole my dad went out for some space cigarettes routine five minutes ago. Are you seriously going to make me waste a skip on a f***ing mid-movie montage? F***ing scoop! Engaging in space shenanigans, but not having a towel nearby to fully clean up the space semen. So, uh, 
how'd that happen anyway? Assuming someone would love to tell you about their injury, if only you would ask. The star pollution, it's gone supernova! Because the movie needed a second act set piece to get it to 90 minutes without boring everyone to death. <laughs> Deus Black Hole enough. It's devolving into a black hole! Scene does not contain an Anne Hathaway explaining time dilation around black holes. We ride that last McGiller out of here! They survive this, this works, take your pick. I honestly have no idea what's going on here anymore. Well, I must uh, congratulate you, Mr. Silver. It seems your cabin boy did a bang up job with those lifelines. Premature and incredibly specific celebration. Grinning smugly and suspiciously when you're still around the entirety of the crew who could easily see you grinning smugly and suspiciously. Face planting your crying face into someone's belly button without explicit consent. Next thing you know, they'll be saying I've gone soft. I think that gravity ship sailed when you adopted your pink squishy friend there. Conveniently timed and somehow unobserved snooper is somehow unobserved and conveniently timed. Busted! <laughs> what we're saying is we're sick of all this waiting. There's only three of them. How is this well-attended mutiny meeting already well in progress right near this barrel that Jim just dove into three seconds ago? How did no one see this? What was it now? Oh, you got the makings of greatness, senor. Wow, it's the rare characters conveniently overheard repeating the very thing they conveniently overheard in the previous scene to the very person they conveniently overheard it from. You have to appreciate the absolute gall to pack in all that convenient voyeurism with such efficiency. Just amazing work by all. Where the devil's my glass? Look, it's not just that leaving his glass behind is such a bullshit reason to catch Jim in the act of leaving. It's that for some reason his glass is the only thing not already installed in his Swiss army arm. Also, I'm sending that Snoop Doggy Dog doesn't have a protege named Swiss Army Arm. <laughs> not checking the lock before destroying a door on a boat that will soon belong to you. This is why we can't have nice doors. Pirates on my ship, I'll see they all hang. No, you won't. Disney won't work up the guts to show hanging pirates until the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And by then, I was too sick of the franchise to care. Morphe, come here. Morph, morph, bring it in. I refuse to believe that this sentient creature who has shown the intelligence to problem solve and emote will now be relegated to a dog trying to choose a master. Morph is way too smart to not already have pondered the ethical ramifications of this decision, and I will hold them accountable accordingly. Captain! Laser ball at 12 o'clock! How the f*** does a laser ball even work? Lasers are light. They're meant to be a ray. What do you possibly gain by putting them in ball form? Cup of tea and I'll be right as rain. The British. Morph waits until the last possible second to reveal they were imitating the map, just in case you didn't already know what an asshole they were. Oh, this is fantastic! A carbon-based life form come to rescue me at last! Having Martin Short and waiting 65% of the movie to introduce his character. I mean, <laughs> solitude's fun, don't get me wrong. Ah, solitude's a snooze fest. Rifton is where the fun is. Ah, inaccessible! And reboot! And reboot! <laughs> Windows Millennium Edition. Look, if you're gonna come along, you're gonna have to stop talking. Huzzah! <laughs> oh, this is fantastic! Immediately breaking the one condition of being able to tag along. This is like when my younger cousin begged to come along with me and my friends as we blew up firecrackers. And I said the one rule was no telling. What was the first thing he did after losing two fingers, that little shit? How about drinks for the happy couple? Oh, uh, ooh, uh, no, uh, thank you, we don't drink, and, uh... And uh, we're not a couple. Which I appreciate because not every single movie needs a forced romantic plot. And she's smiling lovingly at him now, isn't she? Damn it! You get me that map and uh, an even portion of the treasure is yours. This is a dumb negotiation. What is he offering here? To take half the treasure? He's brought exactly zero parlay to this parlay with which to parlay. Delta, you have... Wonderful eyes. Oh, sure, she can say this line without getting in trouble, but when I said it, I was escorted from the clinic by security. Well, give us death. But you gotta help her! Dang it, Jim, I'm an astronomer, not a doctor! Making your Star Wars references too obvious. So what's the plan? This doesn't wake anyone up or alert the lookout. What do you mean they don't have a lookout? How did they not appoint a lookout? That's like night campfire rule number one. Don't panic. Breathing in, <gasps> breathing out. Programming a robot to need to breathe. But you're docked above a planet with gravity, and there are even clouds above you, meaning you are clearly in the planet's atmosphere. Why isn't the planet's gravity in effect? Did we ever get a reason Jim can no look open this secret map that everyone else is befuddled by? Just magical chosen one bullshit. Yeah, I thought so. 
So you put the gizmo ball into the indentation that looks like it was made to fit some sort of gizmo ball? How do you think of these amazingly secret security measures? He used his portal to roam the universe, stealing treasure. That's such a poor use of portals. They're best used for getting test subjects to engage in several deadly science experiments for your sadistic amusement. We are going to need a bigger ball! How dare you, movie? How f***ing dare you? Flip wanted to make sure that nobody could ever steal his treasure, so he rigged this whole planet to blow higher than a Galaxian kite! And his booby trap was a simple laser that was both easy to spot and even easier to step over. Do I have that right? The only way someone doesn't steal this treasure is complete incompetence. You've been very helpful. Truly. So helpful, she's gonna f*** you senseless once y'all get off this planet, thus continuing the time-honored tradition of scientists getting laid. With abnormally thin wrists. But it's not your wrists that matter, it's the width of the middle of your hand. Also, your dimensions shouldn't matter. The knot tire should tie the rope according to those dimensions. Also, also, you're just now noticing you can slip out of the ropes? Or is it that your head is too teeny tiny for your big fat body? Body shaming. Face it, no one in this movie is a good guy. This distance is all the bullshit. They are not this close. Look at how far Jim fell and how little slack Silver has to still be holding the ship. Hurry, people! We got exactly two minutes and 34 seconds to planet's destruction! Whew. Glad he got his brain back just in time to be the bullshit attention third act countdown clock. Let's just say Ben was not one of Disney's better ideas. 58 seconds! Programming a robot to be 10 seconds off in life or death situations. 25 seconds! There should be seven seconds left on the clock and I will hold Ben responsible for all these deaths. Seventeen seconds! Oh, for f**k's sake. It's been a full 13 seconds since you said 25. You can't even keep your incorrect times correctly spaced. This may be the most annoying pointless countdown to ever pointless at its actual count being down. Yeah. Oh, he done it. If by done it, you mean opened up a portal to his home where a planet's worth of flaming debris could come crashing through and kill everyone. They could use a man like you. And I'm sure your recommendation would weigh quite well against his extensive criminal record. <laughs> Aiding and abetting a known fugitive. When I got on this boat, I would have taken you up on that offer in a second. Uh, doubt it. You were immediately suspicious of him when you first got on the boat. You thought he murdered Bones, remember? Look at you. Glowing like Thanks, Cap! As for your dear mother, to rebuild that inn of hers. What is that? A few coins and precious stones? I have my doubts that's enough to finance the construction of an entirely new business. That's not even enough to pay a month's rent in Nashville. <laughs> Not letting Sarah cut her own ribbon to signify the launch of her rebuilt business. Ah yes, turning the badass captain who never once hinted at wanting children through this entire movie into a baby factory. That's good writing right there. I know that's meant to be sweet, but it's actually nightmare fuel. So thanks for that, Disney. That cloud is what I'll see when I close my eyes tonight at 2 a.m. out into the void of space and burn up in the atmosphere of a gas giant. And the most feared of all these pirates was the notorious General Scales. Jim, I have had it. Do you want to go to Juvenile Hall? Is that it? Jim. Jim, look at me. Do you have any idea what it costs to raise you and how much you're just throwing away every day? Give me a number. I really, 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 really want to go! What was that old salamander's name? Oh, yeah. Bones. Billy Bones. Bones? Bones? Mm -hmm. Can't bring in any bows. Damn it, Bones. I need you. Badly. I got two new friends I'd like you to meet. Say hello to my little friend! Your astronomical advice was most helpful. Well, uh, well, I have a lot of help to offer anatomically. It is it's a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what did I say? Nipple? <laughs> uh, there is a nip in the air, though. I say we kill them all now. I say we let them go. You want the map? You're taking me, too. I'm the map!